Honorable Chair, distinguished guests, ladies and gentlemen. In light of my research topic, I would like to present to you today political polarization of the Indo-Lanka fishery dispute and its comprehensive security implications. The narrow strip of water that consists the Pope Bay and the Gulf of Mana separates the two neighboring states in the Indian Ocean, India and Sri Lanka. These two states share many commonalities, amongst them fishing to be significant. Historically, both states engage in fishing using traditional methods. Yet there is a persistent problem to date. Indian fishermen and large-scale trawlers cross the IMBL into the Sri Lankan waters to engage in illegal fishing that cause threats to comprehensive security that consists of traditional and human security implications. A solution is pending to date. Due to many contributory factors, amongst them politicization and polarization being a significant one. This study will examine the problem in concern, the dispute, concepts of security, human, traditional, and comprehensive, politicization and polarization as an impediment to finding a solution to this dispute, impact of this fishery issue on comprehensive security, why solutions sought so far has failed to gain significant results, how to minimize threats to comprehensive security in such situations. Research problem, fishermen from Tamil Nadu transgressing the IMBL into Sri Lankan waters for poaching and bottom trawling is a recurrent problem, leading to conflicts between Indian fishermen and Sri Lankan fishermen, causing traditional and human security concerns and affecting the overall comprehensive security of Sri Lanka. Objective of this study is to analyze and critically evaluate this Indo-Lanka fishery dispute in the backdrop of its political polarization, coloring, and its implications to security. Methodology, designed to examine the long-drawn fishery conflict between India and Sri Lanka, the contribution of politicization and polarization that hinders a solution to this problem, its implications towards security at large, mainly comprehensive security, a problem that is not clearly defined, therefore exploratory research method is adopted, data collection through qualitative interviews with various stakeholders of the fishery issue from the military as well as the civilian sector. The research will adopt a qualitative approach using interpretivist technique for data analysis. Grounded theory will be used as a tool for data analysis. A brief look at the case of Indo-Lanka fishery dispute. How and why did this become a controversial issue to Sri Lanka? The agreements of 1974 and 1976 will be discussed in detail later. Governed by the UNCLOS 3, continuous transgressing of Indian fishermen into Sri Lankan waters. Bottom trawling is an illegal method of fishing which is now banned in Sri Lanka, threat to security. On slide is a graphical depiction of the fishery dispute, depicting the IMBL satellite shots of Indian fishermen crossing the IMBL into Sri Lankan waters and from various areas of India where they come into Sri Lankan waters. Now let us look at the Indo-Lanka fishery dispute in detail. It is an ongoing issue in and around the Polk Bay, Polk Straits, and the Gulf of Mana, and around the Kachitivu Islands. The agreement of 1974 and 1976, governed by UNCLOS III, demarcated and designated the waters between India and Sri Lanka. Yet Indian trawlers continue to cross over to Sri Lankan waters for illegal bottom trawling. According to UNCLOS III, entering into the waters of another state other than for innocent passage, amounts to be illegal. Apprehensions of Indian illegal bottom trawlers and fishermen takes place on a regular basis by the Sri Lankan Navy, and they indeed do a good job. These often lead to controversial conflicting situations between the two states if a lasting solution is not sought. 
However, given the good relations between the two states, India and Sri Lanka, often apprehended fishermen have been released on goodwill. Now let us go on to look at bottom trawling. Bottom trawling has been identified as an industrial method of fishing by the Marine Conservation Institute. A large net with heavy weights dragged across the seabed, scooping up everything in its past, targeted and non-targeted. That is gross destruction and waste of valuable resources. Bottom trawling identified as a devastating method of fishing causing long-term destruction to the marine ecology. Later on in the presentation, I have lined up a brief but very concise video to show the destruction done by bottom trawling and to also depict the new stand that the Sri Lankan government has taken towards this. Now let us focus on a very important point of my study, politicization and polarization of the fishery dispute. Political intervention by Tamil Nadu and as well as from Sri Lanka has left the India-Sri India Lanka fishery dispute unsettled. Political influence to the fishery dispute comes from both sides of the bay. Tamil Nadu placed the fishery dispute to their political and economic gains. On the other hand, Sri Lanka has soft peddled the issue politically for political goodwill with India friendly bilateral relations, and various other conveniences. There are eminent signs that from the Sri Lankan side, the tide is turning now. Now let us focus on security. Transcending nature of security. Security fundamentally focuses on protection. However, various aspects of security is much more than just protection. Security is a long-standing concept and has transcended over time. According to Barry Buzan, the concept of security is a long-standing one, a contested concept, and yet to be given one single definition. On the other hand, traditional security gained momentum during the Cold War, views the state as a single actor to ensure her own survival in the international system. Focus on safeguarding the boundaries of the state, national interest, and its sovereignty. While safeguarding the state, it protects and ensures the well-being of her people from external threats and other related consequences. Human security, on the other hand, with the end of the Cold War, the notion of security changed considerably to take on a human-related aspect. Security took on a new dimension in 1994, and it was named human security. Human security is popularly identified as deepening and widening of security. It is based on physical human dignity and the development of the human being. Sabrina Alkaya said the following about human security. To safeguard the vital core of human lives from critical pervasive threats in a way that it is consistent with long-term human fulfillment. Traditional and human security put together, even though traditional security and human security are treated as two separate areas commonly, traditional security and human security are very much complementary of each other and two sides of the same coin and cannot be eliminated one over the other. In the context, traditional and human security together have formulated comprehensive security. Just as the word comprehensive, it covers all aspects of security of a state and her people. Convergence of all aspects of security culture, a concept that was pioneered by the late Swedish Prime Minister Olaf Palm, advocates a shared security culture that goes beyond state-centric traditional security to amalgamate people-centric security, called human security. Components of comprehensive security is intertwined and looks into security concerns within an outside state. Security implications due to the Indo-Lanka fishery conflict has been identified on the traditional side of human security and the human side of the security to formulate comprehensive security. This brings me to the analysis and the conclusion of the study. 
This illegal fishing dispute posed serious comprehensive security concerns to Sri Lanka. There has been many conflicts in the world over resources, and resources are indeed scarce, and so is the fishery resource to Sri Lanka. The greater objective of this study is to prevent a probable conflict between India and Sri Lanka, as well as the people over resources and comprehensive security concerns. Traditional and human security concerns have been observed concerning this fishery issue, as well as to curb transnational crime in the guise of fishing. Efforts made to bring this issue under control has borne minimal results. Therefore, recommended that all possible options be considered, not only at grassroots and stakeholders to the problem, but also at a political and strategic level. I would call this a multi-pronged approach. And as promised, my video with regard to bottom trawling and the devastation caused due to bottom trawling and uh, the steps that the government has taken. Gentlemen, this brings to the end of my presentation, and these are the references and my acknowledgments. I thank you for your time and look forward to your questions during the question and answer session. Thank you very much. Thank you, Ms. Adams. Um, uh, so, certainly, this is um, one of the issues that despite of an existing international legal framework, um, it has not obviously addressed the problem for a very long time and hence it, the two countries, the two relevant countries are left um, to develop more practical measures uh, to address uh, the issue.